All right, people, I want to talk to y'all about separation, divorce, especially with children involved. First and foremost, I'm going to say Mark 10 says, try and work it out. And also 1 Corinthians 7. Now that you have decided to part ways, I will, let you, I will tell you, settle whatever needs to be settled at the drafting of them papers. Don't expect people to deviate from what the court order says. Talk to people who have been through divorce before so that you have your ducks in a row and you have what you can live with after that gavel hits too many times, guys especially, you think that y'all gonna be cool after the relationship is over and y'all gonna get back together or whatever and you're not gonna have to do what the court order says. A lot of times, these relationships end up going sour and neither party or one party may not care about the child's best interest but just uses the law as leverage. And I'm gonna tell you, let's speak about the law for a minute. You can roll the dice with Pouring your heart out to the court. I don't have no money for a lawyer. I'm trying to do the best I can. The other party has a lawyer. And just rips a new. Uh, just goes in for the kill. And y'all can both have lawyers and throw away a whole bunch of money. Because lawyers going to get they cut. And the child still is not being the center of attention. The lawyer is out for making their money. Unless you know the lawyer personally and getting a deal. But check this. Every time you talk to your lawyer, that's money. Most lawyers charge anywhere from two to $300 an hour. And it's prorated by 15 minutes. So do the math. One fourth of $200 is $50. So a 15 minute call will cost you $50. Or, uh, four going to 300, uh, is that 75? Yeah, or 70, 50 to $75. So, think about it. That drafting of documents and negotiation and you can't figure out what you want or you don't know what, what to expect, ask Google so that your conversations can be fruitful and as, as minimum as possible. And that's if you can afford a lawyer. And guess what? If you can't afford to keep paying your lawyer, you're gonna have to concede to whatever the, 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 the plaintiff wants. Especially if you don't have a, a, a leg to stand on with the argument, and don't expect the court to show any leniency, especially when a court appointed uh, I don't want to say lawyer, but a court appointed official has to intervene to, to mediate or, or, or see what's going on with the situation with the children. You got to pay them people. They may split it or they may make one person pay it or not. So you need to think about these things when you're getting in these relationships with people. Go all the way back to the very beginning. What signs do you see? How was they upbringing? Are they parents forgiving? Is they family forgiving? Is, is the one you're dealing with forgiving? Are they easy to work with? Do they care? Is the child more important than 
being used as leverage against you to try and control and whatever agenda they have. Does this is this person controlling? If you're dealing with a controlling person, male or female, guess what? They're gonna want to control your household through the child, especially if it's their child. And they think they love the child, but don't respect the fact that this is another parent with a different aspect of that child that needs to be cultivated. Now, I do not advocate child abuse or verbal abuse, you know, verbal abuse. Now, I believe in corporate punishment. I believe in whooping. You know, I believe in getting in your child on your child case, but I don't believe in cussing your child out. You old dumb, blah, 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 you know, stuff like that. I don't believe in that. Encourage your child. But at the same time, you need to discipline your child. And sometimes you need to threaten some punishment to motivate your child, depending on, you know, how your child's mentality is and child need to understand what happened over here is different from what happened over there so but you will have some parents that as soon as their child come on they want to know everything which is not supported by the courts but they want to know everything that they did they calling every time turn around trying to figure out what's going on over there deal with these little nosy people figure out you're gonna figure out one way or another who you laid down with to have a child by whether they're gonna be responsive responsible controlling aggravating trying to take you to court every time they turn around and and, and for y'all deadbeat dads y'all make it bad on us good ones y'all make it real bad on us good ones pay your child support go see your child now i'm gonna tell you this now i understand Sometimes it's better just leave the child with the other half because you're going to have to catch it. You're going to catch purity hell every time you go pick the child up. It's just hell. And yes, you do need peace of mind. But at the very least, call your child. Talk to him. If it's if it's just too complicated to visit the child and pick him up. But, all right. I, I would definitely say be in your child's life as much as you can but if it's too difficult to be in your child's life because the co-parent is just making unnecessary inconveniences and stuff like that you gotta have peace of mind because if you bugged out around your child guess what the child gonna feel that energy and it's better just have a phone call conversation but hey look Talk to them, spend time with them on the phone. Make sure you support them. Pay your child support. And guess what? If you if you're the one who has to pay child support, male or female, that's all you required to do. You've done your part in caring for the child. Now, I think a lot of people do not push these congressmen and representatives and and, and politicians to make better child custody laws or child support laws and things of that nature but that's a whole nother conversation and I do believe that some laws need to be changed you shouldn't take so much money from a guy or, or a woman that they can't afford to live as expensive as it is to live, I mean, at the end of the day, two people made that baby. And when you pay child support, it shouldn't be so much that you can't afford to live. It should be a cap, $500. Shouldn't have to pay more than $500 for a child a month, no matter how much you make. We think that a child got to got to live all this extravagant life that means children need to earn their way through life they need to learn that you got to work to get extra 500 bucks shoot that's plenty plenty of help toward bill money if the mama want to live or the daddy want to live whoever the custodial parent the custodial parent want to live all high end and stuff like that they need to work for it that's what they want they need to work for it they shouldn't they shouldn't just be using child support 
as a means of uh, of supporting them and and it should be a cap on age to 18 years old but hey that's just my opinion if you don't speak to your politicians about some of these things we will continue to be bombarded with unfair legislation that creates more and more frustration with dealing with your children it's just what it is i ain't saying directly you frustrated with your child but i'm just saying having a child in the split home will become more and more frustrating the more you have to deal with these unyielding co-parents and laws that say if you don't pay your child support your license is going to get suspended and you will eventually get put in jail so you learn or you burn figure it out be the change that you want to see. I hope I've been informative and helpful.